Hi guys. Merry Christmas. I know it's a bit too early for Christmas, but um, this is my last sermon before Christmas. So I'll say Merry Christmas to you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. It's been a challenging time for me. Um, I I had a member of my family go home to be with the Lord uh, this week. Um, uh, and that's been tough. But otherwise, God is still good because he's with us in the back the challenging times and he's with us in the good times and sometimes what i'm learning is it could be both it could be both and so um so it's been challenging but god is still there and he's still god and what i've learned is um no matter what goes on in your life God is still around your life. For every believer, he has put a banner of love and of grace and peace around you. And nothing can get through that he doesn't allow. God doesn't cause everything. But... um. He uses everything for his good, whether it's whether it's good or or challenging or what we want or what we don't want. God is still God, and although this season may be challenging for you, um, God is still God. And there is nothing that he allows in your life as a believer that he will not use. And the devil will try to convince you, see, all this is going on. Um, but, um, But God is still God. And he will, he will make sure that his children are protected and they get the lessons that they need to get. Sometimes we have to take tests over and over again because we we don't learn the lessons that we should. The first time so God will give us the test again in a different form. But it's the same thing that he wants you to learn. He's he's not trying to drive you crazy, but there 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 are lessons that you need to learn because you'll need those lessons in your later life. So he's not trying to drive you crazy. He's trying to teach you. He's testing you to teach you. And that's the goodness of our God. So yes, it is a challenging time, but it is the greatest, one of the greatest times in my life on YouTube and Facebook. My membership is growing exponentially and I can only give glory to God Although it challenges on one side, it's glory on another side. And um, my sermon today is sit, um, um, is called "When God Calls Your Name." Um, let's pray, Father. I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. You know, you know, my heart is heavy this morning, but I'm here as you've called me to uh, be, and I'm so grateful that you chose me. 
and I'm so and I'm so honored that you chose me. I give you the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Um okay guys I've been thinking lately um, because of what's been going on in my personal life, um, when God calls your name, no one can say no. Because when when He marks you, when you are a believer, marked by God, He sets you aside. Um, to, for his use, and sometimes when he sets you aside for his use, it can be a great thing, and sometimes it can be a challenging thing, and you're like, what the heck is going on? Why are all these things happening? Why are people I love going home to be with God? Why are, you know, why are my finances going crazy? Why is, why are my kids going crazy? Why? It's because God has marked you. He set you apart for him. And it's because he is going to explode with his, his grace and his love. And he's giving you a He's giving you the tools that you need for this season. Sometimes uh, things happen in life and we don't know why. But God wants me to tell you that all of this is, all of what's ever been going on in your life, either good, challenging, or not sure, he's going to use for his glory. Hold on. Don't give up at all. Now is not the time to give up. And the first place that a person gives up is in their mind. And their body follows. Where the mind goes, the, the body follows. Or where the mind goes, the members follow. Because a lot of people haven't given up physically they still go to work, go to school, do all that stuff. But emotionally, they've thrown in the towel. And he says, for all of you who have emotionally thrown in the towel, it's time for you now to pick up that towel, dry the sweat off your brow, and keep going. Because at the end of this, he will get glory from this. You may not understand it, and it's not your job to understand it. It's not your job to understand why, but it's your job to um, to just take one step at a time. Pe people would say just to trust God or whatever. I say... What God has taught me is you don't even have to trust him fully yet. But he will get you to the place of trust that you need to, to do. All you need to do right now is keep moving. All you need to do right now is keep going. Don't let go. Don't give up. Don't let the devil tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not smart, smart enough. The reason why all, the, all these things are happening is because you suck and the Lord doesn't love you. Those are lies from the pit of hell. 
and by this and by the auspices of the Holy Spirit, I I speak to those deep places who want to give up and say, Hell no, you are not today, devil, causing your people to forfeit their destinies to mentally or even physically quit on themselves and others because there's something coming. The reason why God wants you to quit in your mind first is because the mind is where everything takes, um, every everything in the human part uh, takes place. And see, when you are a believer, the Lord controls your spirit. So everything that comes from God first comes from your spirit. But everything in the soulless realm, your mind, will, and emotions comes from your mind. So when the Lord, the, the devil knows he can't attack your spirit because that's God's place. That's the place where God lives. But he can attack your mind. So that's what he'll do. That's what he'll do first. He'll say, oh, the reason why this thing is happening, you better give up. The reason, the reason why you're not getting anywhere is because um, you are... You are just, you are just awful. God doesn't love you, and you should just give up. It's too hard. Give up. You'll never, you'll never find love. You'll never. Um, and he attacks every insecurity first in your mind. So you could, you could be physically not giving up. You're physically showing up for work. You're physically looking after those kids. You're physically doing that. But emotionally and spiritually, you're gone. And physically, you don't do, um, you don't do half as much as you should because you have quit. You have quit. And the Lord's saying, get back on that horse. There is greater at the end of this. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up on yourself because he won't give up on you. He loves you too much. He sees there. there is so much inside of you, beloved. I wish you could see what what he sees inside you right now. And the reason why uh, some people in this generation are, they just quit on everything is because they don't see hope. But I'm here on this Christmas sermon to call hope out today. There is hope. There is destiny. There is something inside of you. So within those, within, within the mind telling you to give up, there's always a spiritual component that says, keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, it's up to you which one do you want to speak the loudest? Your spiritual component that says keep going or the mental component that says give up? It's your choice. But I'm telling you, the Lord has greater on the other side of this for you. The Lord has greater in your spirit. What the Lord has in store for you, there's no need to, you cannot compare it to what you're going through. 
hold on. You're strong enough. You can get through it. No matter who, who leaves your life, no matter who comes into your life, God is still on the throne. And, and he still has a plan for you. All you have to do is take one step. All you have to do is take one step, one step at a time. You don't even have to, people say trust the Lord. You don't even have to trust the Lord right now. All you need to do is take one step. Don't quit on God. Don't quit on yourself. You're too legit to quit. Like the 90s song says, because when you become a believer, that legitimizes you. That grounds you into the kingdom. And he, he says right now to tell, to tell you that you're too legit to quit. You cannot quit because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what things are going to happen tomorrow. Don't quit. You can get through this. You will get through this. Whatever you need to do, bear down, buckle down, set your face like, like flint and move forward. If you have to... Um, there's a quote by Martin Luther King that says, if you have to run, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you have to do, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep going. Don't give up on yourself. Too many people in this generation have given up on themselves. But the Lord's saying you can't give up on yourselves because there's so much gr greater inside of you that you, you have no idea. There is so much grit inside of you, so much determination. And I call forth, I rebuke that give up spirit and call forth destiny. It'll start from your belly and come right up your mouth. You said you don't know what you're meant to do and you feel like you're waffling. That's okay. Just take one step forward. Don't stop. Keep moving. I know it's hard. I know that person walked out on you. I know that person died on you. I know it. It looks like it's hopeless, but keep moving. Even if you have to feel your way in the dark, even if you have to sacrifice everything you have, just keep going because this too won't be in vain. Everybody says this too shall pass. It will pass, but it will. It will pass, but... This, too, is not in vain. Whatever you're going through, sun, rain, heartache, pain, this, too, is not in vain. This, too, is not in vain. You're not going through all the crap you're going through right now, all the, all the self-doubt, all the emails, emails not being answered, you're not going through all of this um, to um, in vain. There is a purpose for your pain. Just keep moving. You're not going through this in vain. You're not going through this for nothing. You're going through this because you need the lessons that this will teach you. Everything in your life, especially your struggles, teaches you lessons. 
and that's what this is. It's to teach you lessons and to teach others that you will come across how to go through. Sometimes people need to see you to know how to go through. Sometimes you don't know the people who are watching you to to see how how you go through, especially if they know you are a believer. So go through it like a good soldier. You will go through. This will end. This is not the end, but this will end for you. And brighter is coming. Brighter is coming. Brighter is on the way. Don't give up. You're so close, hun. Don't give up, beloved. Don't give up, beloved. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep striving. Keep raising those kids. If you plugged out of your life, plug back in. The Lord is saying right now, if you plugged out of your life, plug back in. Because a lot of people have plugged out of their life. And the Lord is saying right now, plug back in. Because it's so easy to quit and give up and whatever. But it's much harder to stay. The Lord is saying, plug back in. Get involved in your children's life. Get involved with your coworkers. Don't give up on your job, even if it's, it, even if it's not what you want to do. Don't half-ass it. Sorry for my language, but don't halfway do it. If you're going to do anything, do it full way. Not even, um. Not even if everyone else is halfway doing it. You do it full way because you you never know who's watching. So whatever you're doing, whether it's sweeping floors, whether it's doing whatever, do it with excellence. Go the extra mile. Why? Because you never know who's watching. You never know what skills you're developing without developing skills, uh, without consciously developing skills, because sometimes God will have us in places where where you'll be like, this job sucks. It's not what I want to do, but it's giving you the skills that you need. It's giving you the skills that you need to wake up on time to work with people, to manage conflict. So when you do get to where you're going, um, you'll know how to manage conflict. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. And, And when you do anything, do it with excellence. Go above and beyond what you what you're doing because like there's a thing in our culture um i rebuke the spirit of quiet quitting and for those of you who don't know what quiet quitting is quiet quitting actually is when you when you only do what you have to do and no more that's a spirit that's a spirit that's not of god God requires the children, his children, to be excellent. Be excellent in everything you do. Excellent doesn't mean perfect. Um, excellent means that you um, show God in every area. You do things with um, professionalism. You do things at the highest level that you can in whatever way. And it's also about to 
how you treat people. Oh, wait, I, uh, something occurred to me the other day. And I always say that people want, people want to be seen, to be heard, to be affirmed, and to be loved. They want to be seen, heard, affirmed, and love. So when people come in contact with you, whether they're Christian, whether they're gay, whether they're LGBTQ, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're Latino, do they feel seen? Do they feel heard? Do they feel affirmed? Or do they feel loved when they come in contact with you? If you don't, if they don't, the Lord said, before you move on to what you want to do, you need to get your attitude right. Sometimes saints, it's it it's it's not God's will that we like that we're at the place that we are. It's just because our attitude stinks. We're rude to people. We step over people, and we think that's the way to get through. But it isn't, because when God called your name, um, he, he'll expect your best, whether your best is good or whether your best is great, he'll expect your best. But along with that, he'll expect you to be gracious and to be kind and to know how to deal with with conflict because conflict will come but it's all in how you deal with it and having a bad attitude about things are not going to get you anything you the lord said you need to adopt my perspective on every situation you need to adopt my attitude in every situation because sometimes God isn't holding you back or whatever you're like why am I here and you're complaining and you're complaining and getting upset and whatever but the Lord's saying it's not me holding you back I want to give this to you but your attitude about things suck your attitude, your negative perspective on your life and your gossipy spirit, that's what's holding you back. And the Lord wants to uproot and rebuke that negative attitude in, and that gossipy spirit and to bring an attitude of positivity and joy. And he wants to bring the spirit of kindness and compassion back to the church. Um, because I believe that Christians have been accused of being not kind and having the worst attitudes and being rude and being kind, being unkind to people that they don't even know and the lord wants us we want to see god in the earth we want god to come back and we we want jesus to come back we want all that to happen but he's saying but he's saying for that to happen for us to see god's glory on earth we need a change of attitude. We need to get our priorities right. We need to get a spirit of compassion where we can empathize with people even if we don't agree with people, even if like they, they live how we wouldn't live or we think how they live is disgusting. We need to have 
compassion or, and empathy for them. And I'm not saying that we just forsake our morals and everything's okay. No, I'm just saying that even if we don't agree, we can still love them. We don't have to agree to love. We just need to say, you know what love is for me? I've always said this. Love is to embrace even if you don't agree. You can embrace the person and who they are um, even if you don't agree or understand. Love doesn't mean you agree and understand. Love means despite the fact that I may not agree or understand, I embrace you because you're a person created by God too. Um, the, the Bible says God so loved the world. He didn't say God so loved Christians. He loves everybody with the same voracious spirit of love um, that, that he has for you. And if he showed you compassion, he wants you to extend that kind of compassion to other people. And I believe that's what God really wants. God wants, the Lord wants kindness and compassion to come back into our speech, into our words. And he says that even in sermons sometimes, unknowingly when we're trying to preach the word of God, um, sometimes our words are, are filled with venom. Now, I'm not saying we should, we should soften the truth or not tell the truth, but there's a way to say things. There's a way to bring forth things that heal and not destroy. In too many of our pulpits, in too, ma too many times, we've destroyed people with our words. We've put down people. We've shut down people. we beat up people with our words saying that it's God's word. No. That's not God's word. That's just you being venomous and using the Bible to cover it up. The Lord wants the spirit of compassion and love to come in our hearts this holiday season. Not only this holiday season, but generally for 2024. He wants the spirit of compassion and the spirit of love to come into our hearts. When we, when I look at Jesus, the most interesting thing about Jesus is he spoke with such compassion without giving up who he was. He spoke um, when he spoke with the woman at the well with such compassion and grace with, without attacking her. He put it in, in a way that was so soft and she had to come to him. He didn't say, uh, you're, a, you, you're an awful person. You have five five husbands, you need to come to me so I can forgive you of your sins. He, he didn't say that. He started with a conversation and that conversation led to him revealing himself to her to the point where she was so happy. She was so happy. She told everybody, come see a man that told me everything I did. She was so happy. She felt so loved. And she felt safe with him. 
And I think the problem with uh, some churches is people don't feel safe with us. The problem with some Christians is we like gossip. We like gossip more than anything. And people don't feel safe with us. The church is supposed to be a place of safety, but oftentimes it's a place of gossip. It's a place of, oh, look what she did. It's the most unsafe place ever. But but I'm praying today, this holiday season, that we bring safety, compassion, and love back into our churches. Because when we bring safety, compassion, and love back into um, first our hearts and our spirit, first our 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 spirits and our minds, the, the place where God lives and the place where we have our mind, will, and emotions, that's when people will flock to the church. Could you imagine if the church was a place of safety and not condemnation? People would be flooding the church, but historically, the church has been known to be a place of condemnation. And how do you make the church a place of love and safety? Well, you become a place of love and safety because the church is not buildings. The buildings is just where we gather but human beings are the church. So do people feel safe with you? Can people tell you things and you just keep it to yourself? Or when people tell you things, do you just want to gossip and put it on Facebook and say, oh, you know what this sister told me. If people can't trust you, you can't. You can't be a bearer of Christ because um, one thing I love about Jesus is when I tell him something in prayer, it stays with him. And I can pour up my heart without worrying things. So about things getting out. So if we want to be Christ-like, let's start there. Let's start there. Let's start with managing our tongues and managing our words and being a safe place for people to come and bring their burdens, for people to come and lie and, you know, um, lie and cry and get out all their emotions. And then... And then we can just be a place of compassion and safety. And I'm telling you, uh, church, that's what people are looking for. When God calls you by name, he calls you to be a place of compassion and safety. He calls you to be a space where people can run and see him and get love and get and get restoration. Because when people feel safe with you and trust you, you can minister to them. Ministry becomes easy. But when people don't feel safe with you and there's distrust, it is so hard. For you to minister to them and bring them into this glorious gospel. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. I'm just really honored. Um, I'm just really honored. This is just a true honor for me today. And It is just an amazing honor.
So thank you all today. Bye guys. See you soon. Take care. I won't be on until January now. Um so have a happy and safe holiday season and Merry Christmas. I was I was gonna do a story today but God had something had something special for you today. So I didn't get to the story. Um but I like to follow the leading of the Lord. It says, many uh, are the plans of the man's heart, but God um, knows them all. So I, I want to be a person who always follows the Lord. So take care, Merry Christmas, and have a happy and safe holiday season. And a wonderful 2024. See you in January. Bye, guys.